ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, me, Michel Vaillancourt, Richard Victory Gaming. It's 9-28, Saturday, December 22nd, couple days short of Christmas, and we're going to be doing some more Dungeons & Dragons stuff. Um, uh, the whole family's here for the holidays, we're all gamers, um, and uh, I've convinced my sweetheart to come out of retirement as a gamer, um, so we're going to be doing a kick in the door game Monday as part of the the day's relaxation uh, stuff, so I'm going to be building a five-room dungeon today, working on the same stuff we were working on last uh, broadcast. Um, got a template that I like the look of, um, and we'll get started. Uh, the idea is real simple. I need a, you know, okay for second level adventurers kind of thing. Um, five, five to eight rooms, um, just big enough to stomp around in for an afternoon, beat, beat, a couple, beat up a couple of bad guys, and roll some dice. So that's what we're up to. Um, so yeah, let's see here. Uh, microphone's position is not great. That's better. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Um, how's that? That better? Yeah, I think that's better. Just trying to keep an eye on my mic levels here. All right. Give me a sec while I rearrange stuff I probably should have done before. There we go. Cool. All right. There we go. That's probably a bit better, yeah? Okay. So let's do this. Oops, wrong button. Camera left. There we go. That's the one I wanted. All right. So let's uh, do a quick bit of time travel. Um, I had created a map. Uh, it's this one here. Yep, that's fine. And I had, so the, uh, this is all done in campaign cartog Pro Fantasy's campaign cartographer 3 plus. And uh, about four hours in, uh, this is what I've got. A little cluttered, a little busy, but uh, I like the look of it. And part of the area is right over here um, in the mid-northeast of the map. Um, we'll ask you to be patient with me here. I just got myself a new gaming mouse, and I'm totally not used to anything this sensitive. I've been gaming and playing with a track, uh, gaming and working and doing you know map design for 15 years with the Logitech trackball. So I'm totally not used to, uh, to a high-resolution gaming mouse. So anyway, our um, we decided, or I decided, that what we're going to do was start out and maybe write our first little mini adventure for the uh, for this pile of stuff in the area between Hartwick and those three little dots over there. Means a ruins. So there's a ruins. Just this is a lake. So there's some hills. There's a little area Hartwick. So that's what this zoom is. You can see a bit better. So what I'm doing is going to do a five-room dungeon based on this area here. All right. Um, just give me a sec. I want to find something real quick. Pop on to Pinterest because there is... Uh, Pinterest, by the way, is a source of all kinds of great D&D gaming material. Um, all kinds of cool little magic items, miscellaneous magic devices, all kinds of cool stuff, character art, you name it. I've got a, an entire section. Just, uh, all I use Pinterest for is gaming, pretty much. Uh, there we go. That's the one I wanted. And it's this one. So, yeah. Um, this is the, everything you need to know about a classic five-room dungeon right here in this little, right in here in this little image. Camera bottom right. Really do want to get myself a stream deck. So yeah, this is it. You need an entrance, a puzzle, uh, a setback area, a boss fight, and a reward. That that's the five pieces you need in a dungeon. So so um, the name of the map is forty five kilometers east northeast of Hartwick. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, voodoo here. I'm going to say. Um, Tools, hyperlinks, link with a map, and I'm going to say we're going to link this back to Saitlin Island, and I'm actually going to grab 
the map title. Here we go. Oops, cancel. So now, if I uh, click that, yeah, save that, it takes us up to our little area here. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing here. Tools, hyperlink, and click map. And we've got our Hartwick Island open. And I'm just going to glom this. And we're going to save that. And then that takes us, that teleports us back and forth. Now, you, there is, it, because, um, you can have it basically not show your links for, for neatness sake. And if you print stuff out, it doesn't show the links. So you don't have to worry about that. But it just lets you know that that's a link and where it's going to take you. Um, view. Uh, hide hyperlinks, right? So there you go. It's still a link, right? If I hit that, it still works. And it's a very handy way of organizing your maps, particularly if you're doing campaign views. <coughs> All right. So now what I'm going to do, uh, so I've got a, an initial area. This is going to be the place that the characters arrive. It's the outside. Everything else is going to be in the hill. So there's sort of a transition zone. There's the sandy area. There's a little keep out here. So let's get going. All right, <clears throat> so I need to, uh, okay, I'm going to go on to my, I'm going to add a sheet. Sheet is going to be called, um, Going to call it the RPG design screen. Uh, I'm going to move it so it's below the map border and the grid. And that's the what I'm on. I'm going to change my layer so that I'm on the temp layer for this sheet. I'm going to change my color here to a really aggravating shade of fuchsia. And you'll see why in a minute. All right, so this map is 80 meters by 50 meters. And so for a five-room dungeon, you want to divide your area up by eight, um, or by nine. You, you want to design your, basically take up your working area by nine. So uh, a third of 80 and a third of 50, right? So... Take a calculator out here. 80 divided by 3. Oops. Divided by 3 is... 80 divided by 3 is 26. We're just going to say 25. And then 50 divided by 3, I think, is 15, essentially. So 25 by 15. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box. on this layer. I'm going to start at 0, 0, and then I'm going to say 25, 15. And that gives me a box. <clears throat> and then I'm going to copy that box around the map, and I think you'll start to see in a pretty quickly what it is I'm up to. And so we're going to copy the first one, and I'm going to turn snapping on. And I'm going to turn the grid on so I can see it. So the first one I'm going to copy from here to here. And then what we're just going to do is copy this out, right? And we're going to do the same thing here.
And what I'm actually going to do is move this. Um, so just give me a sec here. That one and that one. And we're going to say do it. And what I want you to do is move from here to here. And then what we're going to do um, is I'm going to copy that whole thing prior to do it. I'm going to copy it from here to here. And that gives us a, a, a grid. So now I'm going to adjust where it's sitting on the map. So I want you, and I want you, and I want you. And we'll grab you while we're at it. Make sure we've got everything clicked here. And we got nine objects picked, so we got everything. Then what I'm going to do is grab this. So there's a couple things. When you're designing your map, generally speaking, the bottom of the map tends to be where you put your text boxes and stuff like that. Um, and if you're right, if you're, you know, North America, if you're North America, European, you tend to read from left to right. Um, so that means that you tend to put um, all your other map notes down the left-hand side of your map. So what we're going to do is now that we've got this, we're going to grab it and just drag it over and line it up with that corner. All right. What that does is it gives you a little working boundary. Um, and so this is your nine nine areas on a five root dungeon. It doesn't if you got ten. Basically, every time if you if you're working, what I recommend is you work in multiples of five rooms. So for every five rooms, you need nine squares. Doesn't matter how big your map is. Nine for every five rooms, nine squares. And the reason is because here's the thing. Um, what you want to do is leave space between all your rooms. And you don't want every area, particularly in a dungeon crawl, to be occupied. Because otherwise the players know where to look. So if you want a secret room, you can put stuff and leave maybe a center area open, forcing the players to go around. And this is how you get a five-room dungeon layout that actually is that avoids repetition all the time, right? Um, so now we've got the design screen in place. I'm going to freeze this layer. Oh, can't do that. I'm on that layer. So I'm going to go to the standard layer, and then my temporary layer, I'm going to freeze it. Then I'm going to shift off this one, and I'm going to go to the... Uh, the outside layer for now. Oh, uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, and we're going to go there. So this gives us uh, an idea of what we want to do. So I got five rooms, right? Uh, I'm going to use the initially. Going to use what's this one here? This is oh, there's my cave tool. And then I'm just going to change this to black. Wall width is OK. So yeah, I'm going to do some caving here. We're just going to use the regular plain cave. And the first one I'm going to put. So my thought is what I want to do is roughly have the players kind of move around in a bit of a circle as they're exploring. I want, because the, because half the group, uh, w one player in the group hasn't played in, tw in 15 years, another player in the group hasn't played in 10 years, and then the other two are relatively experienced gamers. They play you know, three times a week. What I want to do is basically come up with a bit of a hand-holding dungeon to get everyone back in the group groove. I want the uh, advanced players to have a moment where they get to think or go, oh yeah, I figure out what's going on. But at the same token, I want the newer players who are out of practice to have a little bit of, not, not be having to, to work too hard. They can focus on the, on the fun. So we're going to put our first room up here. we go. Now, just for perspective here, um, that bow is, that room is 22 meters across, that's 66 feet, and said to be 70 feet. That's bow, that's bow combat kind of distances, so there's plenty of room to move in there, right?
Yeah, it's uh, one meter square, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this square. I'm going to put a room here and a room here for sure. And we'll go from there. So... Okay, we're going to put one here. One there. So I've got one, I've technically got two rooms here, right? I'm going to treat this all as one encounter area, though, because I'm not going to bother dooring this, and it's mostly ruins. It's a place for the players to look around, solve their first puzzle. Where's the rest of the dungeon? Because the idea is it's going to be a secret tunnel that's going to run from here, underground, into here. And then we'll have a branch that goes this way, and a branch that wibble wobbles this way. So i got one, two, three, four rooms. I'm going to put a small room in here that doesn't do anything, but will force the players to slow down and think. There we go. I'm going to put a larger room, so... It's basically a, just a junction box is what that room is. Um, and I'm going to put a room down here. There we are. And literally, I'm just making stuff up. There's no particular reason, rhyme nor reason to these room shapes. Give me a sec here, just check and chat with Discord real quick. All right. And so, yeah, so we've got. One, two, three, four, five. Um, uh, a bit of a dud here. I'll probably put another one up in this, another small one up in that area. Hang on a second, just checking something. Yep, cool, all good. Okay, so we're going to grab, and I'm going to put another little room up here. We're going to be, all right, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to save what I've got. Now I'm going to start hooking these things up by corridors. We're going to use the corridor tool. Now... So what I'm going to do hmm. Okay, so I suppose the first thing I'm going to need to do is put my trapdoor secret. Ho ho ho. Let's see here. Uh yeah, trap secret trapdoor. And that will go here. Now, I'm going to list this item. Do it. It's on symbols flat. Um, what I think I would rather do... is I'm going to add... A and this is going to be symbols and we're going to move this one down we're going to apply I'm going to change this item 
and I want to move it onto symbol secret. Then what I want to do is go to symbol secret, and I want to add um, an outer glow. I want it to be kind of a blue color. I'll actually use the, the same color I used off the other map. Uh, we'll st actually, we'll start with, uh, no, we'll go with the blue. We'll go with the blue. And I want this to be two and two. Apply. No, too strong. 0. 0.5 and one. Right, and that's way too big. Uh, 0.5, apply. Uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. There we go. That's so. Anything we put on that layer is going to have this little soft blue glur blue glow around it. It's going to kind of pop on the map. Now. Obviously, what we're going to do is that we're going to, when we go to print this map off, we're going to hide this layer, right? So if we go to outside, for example, and we say wall symbol secret, we hide that, we apply that, and you'll see it disappears completely. So the GM version of this map, um, we'll be able to easily see where all these items are. The player version of the map, and what I'm actually going to do is print this out at... Um, um, one mi at a at a scale of five millimeters uh, is one meter to give you know basically a, and then I'm going to glue that to foam board so we'll just lay the map out in pieces as the group explores. Um, so yeah, the idea is that um, player map so the player map won't see this stuff. The GM map will, right? So we'll, we'll decorate the, the old keep here in a moment. What I need to do next is I just need to build the, tu the, the tunnel that goes underneath, right? <clears throat> so... I'm just trying to figure out if I want this to be a rough cut or a strong cut. I think I want this to be, we're going to say it's a three meter wide corridor. Um, with a rough floor background, solid walls, walls are 0.5 thick. Yeah, it's all good. And we're going to Charlie to connect without a break. And then we're going to come here and we're going to connect. Save. Cool. Now. Let's see. Let's see here. Um, <clears throat> list. Do it. Floors, walls, sheet. What's tempting is to grab this whole thing and throw it on the uh, secret on that secret as well. Let's just uh, save and let's just try that. So I'm gonna multi poly. I'm gonna multi edit. I mean, I'm gonna grab this block. I'm gonna say do it, and I say sheet. Go to. I guess I'll have to rename that to, you know, GM only. And then there we go. So now, again, so I don't want to give stuff away early, right? 
So we're going to change this, rename, and this is GM only. Apply. And I'm going to hide that, apply, and it just goes away. So now I can print this whole square. I can print this whole square off, including the sand and stuff, so they can players can sniff around the outdoors, and then you know do a, oops uh, do a version of it that actually shows that piece. Okay, that's cool. So now we're gonna oops gonna just middle click and drag here to pan. So now what I want to do is I'm gonna edit this. I need to move some nodes around. So we're going to grab here. I want to grab this one and we're going to pull it down to here. I'm going to remove some nodes. And the reason is you can see what I'm doing, right? So now we have the illusion that this rough cut, um, this rough cut stone, uh, the you know the 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 cut stone cavern, the actual worked cavern, comes out into this cave complex. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking three meters wide is too big. I think I want that much more restricted and much more kind of secretive. That that looks that's that's overpowering. It's the right idea. It's too big. So I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna erase this. I'm gonna come back over here and grab the tool again. And I'm just going to go with a with a one meter, uh, two meter. Yeah, two meters is plenty. Um, one point five meter. And we're going to center it down here. We're going to connect without a break again. We're going to come up here, and we're going to connect. And there we go. So we kind of come out in, you know, the, the rough stone kind of juts out. That looks good. Now we're going to move the sheet again using the multi-edit. Do it. Let's move this to sheet GM only. And OK. Redraw. Yep, we get our, our, our hidden glow. Now, if that's looking too obnoxious for people's tastes, um, what you can do is uh, go to your GM only sheet, change your glow, and pick a you know a little bit more restrained color. Um, I'm pretty sure it was 50 was the color I was using on the other map. Yeah, 50 it was either 50 or 51, so that's a, a much more Right, and it gives you that appearance, um, much more like it was emphasized with a dark ink. Right, so it's entirely up to you what you what you like the look of. Um, the design screen, we can just hide that right now. We don't need it anymore. Make it easier to work. The other thing you can do if you don't like the color is you can knock the opacity down. Bring that down to 50%, right? And it becomes much more state, uh, more understated. Still, It's still obvious, right? You can still see it. Um, so tune it however you like it. You know, it's your map. All right. So now, essentially what I'm going to be doing is um, so I'm going to do now interestingly enough um, 
there isn't a cor- there aren't any corridors um, for caves. Uh, essentially, a corridor between caves is just a long, narrow cave that happens to have open ends. That's so. We we'll use our cave tool again. I'm going to go from here. So you want to start well inside so that you're, you know. So that when you're redrawing, that it looks pretty seamless, right? And then we're going to go do the same thing here. I'm going to start up here. We're going to come down. Always do a little bit of a zigzag. Players hate corners they can't see around, so add plenty of them. Right, anything that might have someone uh, might have something lur lurking in the corner. Um, so we're gonna grab here. We're gonna go down. We're gonna go up. We're gonna go down again. And I'm roughly keeping a one and a half meter wide. All right, just wide enough for people to go single file, because again, players don't like that. So do it lots. That's looking pretty good, eh? All right. Now, I want to experiment with something, so we're going to hit save. And what's this one on? It's on floors, caves. So I just want to see what happens. Um, just, again, goofing around. Uh, floors... I'm just to add a drop shadow, I'm curious. Uh, one and one and one to start with, apply. Wow, that really looks artificial, doesn't it? Okay, if I go 0 0.25, 0 0.25, what do I get? Yeah, it's a bit better, it's a little more subtle but it lifts everything up off the paper in a way that doesn't look good. So we're just going to forget that. I was just curious what it would do. Yeah, don't like that. So... Hmm. All right, let's go back up to our top level. What I'm thinking about doing here is making this essentially a ring. So if the players go to the right, they'll wind up just doing the whole lap. If they go to the left, they wind up doing the whole lap, no matter which way they go. I think I would prefer that as a as an entry as a as a starter, just so, so we don't force players to have to backtrack and waste time. In other dungeons, designs might be cool to have uh, uh, dead ends and stuff. In this case, I don't think it's going to bias anything in terms of the player experience. zoom in a bit here we're gonna grab our so what I'm gonna do is we're actually gonna go the long way there we go And then we're going to do the same thing over here. So, that's looking pretty good. So that gives us a pretty good start. 
So now we're just going to have to add some labels. So I'm going to keep like entity. There we go. We've got a, and we're going to grab our, our number tool. So we're going to one here, two's up here, three, four, and five. And then down here, I'm going to do a 1A, put it down here. Then I'm going to edit the properties, text properties. It's two meters. I'm going to shrink that a bit, and I'm going to 1.5 because it's a sub area, right? And OK. So our areas are marked out. And again, that's going to be, that's probably only going to show up on the GM, on the GM map. In fact, probably move that now. So we're going to grab our multi-edit. Two, three, four, five, and six. Do it. And we're going to change the sheet you're on, and we're going to drop you to the GM layer. Now, obviously enough, that's going to change the effect. We can turn our grid off here for greater clarity. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to do another keep. We're going to snag this. And uh, back to black. And then... Floor. Ah, there we are. Wall default hatching. So we'll uh, now what we're going to do is we'll start down here and we're going to outline the whole map. And we're just going to do this as a series of smooth polys. Again, middle mouse click and drag to get the uh, to get the the pan feature. So what I'm just doing is outlining each distinct area um, for its own crosshatch. And this is sort of that, uh, you know, gives you the, the old school dungeon crosshatch walls that are so popular. Uh, Dyson, I think, is the guy he's doing them this way. Now, if you don't like, you know, how wide it winds up, you can go back and just tune it up. You just use your uh, your node edit tool, grab an edge and just drag it in a bit, right? There we go. I tend to, you know, visually stick within a couple of meters. Um, particularly where I do a lot of stuff with Roll20, um, the players generally don't get to see the whole map. So usually what I do is that however wide this gap is, is where I put the light wall. In, roll, uh, in, in the Roll20 uh, online 
virtual tabletop system. You can basically draw a wall that defines where light can move. And so what I tend to do is draw the light wall halfway through the hatching so the players get to see the wall. It's not just black. They get to see a bit of the artwork and stuff of the dungeon. All right, we're going to outline the rooms, then I'll do the rest of the corridors. Oops. Okay, and you can see here I kind of clip the edge a bit, so we're going to grab our tool and we're going to drag this out. We're going to grab this and drag it out. And there we go, that fixes that nice and neat. And so it's just this, this area up here we need to do, and then this corridor down here. And again, I start inside the other room, and I give myself plenty of room to work with here. I want the cross hatches to blend relatively seamlessly, and I find that if you try and cut corners, as it were, you just wind up doing a lot of node editing. And there we go. That's not bad. Yeah, that all looks okay up there. Um, probably wind up, well, we'll see. Probably wind up doing this piece in two chunks. And then again, I'm going to go here. And then I'm going to grab my wall background tool, my hatching. Okay, save, yep. So there we go. That's our five-room dungeon floor plan laid out. Um, now we got to add the decorations. You know, that's going to be... And to do the decorations, we probably want to think a little bit about what the rooms themselves are. Um, Definitely here in this case, um, probably one little pond somewhere in here. Maybe a pond, some rocks, and a mushroom. So let's see what we got for drawing water. Uh, water. So what I'm going to do is kind of cheat. And we're going to. What's that do? Really? Just gray? That doesn't look very good at all. Um, okay, I zap a node out here. There we go. this. 
Jesus. And then I'm going to zap this node here out. Uh, what did I do? Yeah, that's cool, but I didn't get I didn't actually fix my problem. And There, that's better. So that gray blob doesn't lo doesn't look too good, does it? At least. Um. All right, let's just uh, get rid of this thing completely do it and let's take a look at our water options again water lines wide how about that and That's really not jamming it, is it? It's really not getting the goods there. Why? I don't know what's going on there. All right, well, we'll get rid of it, and we'll put our other one back. Actually, I can... No, it's not going to let me step back and put... Okay, I was hoping I'd get, get the, the deleted object back, but no, okay, that's fine. All right, we'll do this a different way. Water default. edit this um, why okay that's really awkward isn't it why is it oh, fine all right so we're gonna say here we're gonna say Water default. Uh, it's doing a poly. All right. Um, so we're just going to do this by hand. It's going to go to the water level. And water. And okay. And then I'm gonna set my color. As yeah, medium gray. I can work with that. And then I'm gonna do a smooth poly. So we're going to turn snapping off here just so I can do what I want.
go. Save that. And that. Move up. Oops, down. I want water above floors. There we go. So now we can see our... And then what I'm going to do is I'm essentially just going to do contour lines. So I'm going to go with a blue. And then I'm going to go with uh, 0 0.01 meters. And then I'm going to do there. Come right around just on the inside edge of this one. There we are. So that's our pond. It's not small using the dist command for distance, so it's about 20 feet across. All right. Next thing I'm going to do... Um, doors, ladders... So what I'm going to do here and then here I'm going to go to the symbols symbols itself um, probably symbols flat and then I'm going to put some elevation marks in basically what I want is for the players to feel like they're climbing uphill, so no, not that one. I need the arc. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What are you doing? There we go. Ah, I'm still blue. So I'm going to change to black. And I'm going to go to 0.25. That's a little heavy. Uh, 0.125 maybe. There we go. So by convention, what I do is I say that each one of these lines is half a meter raise. So three of them. So one, two is three meters. Um, sorry, two of them is a meter. So there to there is one. So there is, so it's one. So it's, yeah, that's, so from the first one to here is half a meter. From here to here is one is is one 1 1.5 to 2.5 so it's almost a almost a three meter rise over oops over 12 meters so it's a fairly sharp incline right so the players will notice that and we're going to do the same thing down over here
paint one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to put six of these over here. So there'll be a, a slope the players will be and going up a hill or something that kind of it oddly enough the players will always interpret interpret going upwards in a cave complex as being um, well, a, a change of elevation is always a change in dramatic tension players will always interpret that as something important is happening Here we go. So down is towards the arrow. Uh, no, sorry, up is towards the arrow. So that's a, actually a slope down. So they're going to be going down to go into five. Okay. I'm okay with that. It, all I care about is there's a change of, of elevation there. All right. Um, gonna need a uh, treasure chest, of course. So we'll put. Uh, let's see, a pedestal with a sword on it, because that's cool, and it'll sit over here. And we'll put some treasure beside it. And we're going to containers and treasure. Um, I'm going to create a symbols um, player value. This is stuff that I want the players to draw. T I want to draw attention to for the players. And we're going to do again, we're going to put a glow, um, outer glow. In this case, I'm going to go with kind of a straw gold color. Uh, we'll go with a primary yellow. We're going to say 1 and 0.5. And we're going to apply that. Oops. <laughs> and OK. Then I'm going to multi edit my treasure heap here. Do it. Do that. OK. And now we'll. That's a little strong. We're probably going to want to back that up. So we're going to say 0.5 and 0.25. Now what we can do, and this is what I should have done, so actually what I'm going to do is just delete this outer glow. I'm going to go to my GM layer. I'm going to copy that glow and paste it here. And we're going to apply it, and you're going to see that it immediately comes up. That's cool. Then what I'm going to do is go here and change the col change the color. So I got the same settings, just different color now. And that allows you to maintain some visual consistency across your maps. Come up with the look you want and just change the color. So that that's pretty obvious, you think? Yeah. Kind of like that. And naturally, there should probably be a tre an actual treasure chest that the players can get in trouble with. And I'm going to hit my shift key to be able to rotate this. I'm going to tuck it in the back here.
right and then we're going to grab you and we're going to throw that on the sheet we want and there it is so there's our treasure pile players will like that okay so now the boring stuff actually you know finding monsters and things I need to take a five minute break I'll be right back and then we'll um, start laying adding excuse me we'll start adding monsters to our map Thanks for your patience, folks. Just one check. Just going to check Discord here. Uh, pretty quiet. Not surprised. It's bloody early. <laughs> All right. All right. So now we got our uh, our basic map laid out. It's looking pretty good, actually. I like that. So, the next thing we're going to do, so we've got our entrance, our puzzle, setback, boss fight, and we've got to figure things out. Um, now, next URL here, um, and D&D 5e. Red card D&D tools, that's the guy I like. Uh, if that's a treasure generator. This guy, by the way, red card. Uh, it's uh, red cards, uh, red, red, red cat art, red cat art dot, uh, dot com, D&D 5 tools. He's got some great stuff. Uh, treasure generators, magic items, uh, d dungeon dressing. So we're going to say ten, not, you know, nine rooms. There we go. It's it's all weird stuff, but it's interesting. You can so if you don't know what else to do, yeah, you know, that's some options. Um, random spellbook generator, um, second level. Yeah, wizard, do it. Bang. Hey, there you go. Second level spellbook. The one I particularly like is the random treasure generator. Um, you can do hoard. 
every once in a while it finks out and you're going to have to start and try again but there you are so bag of tricks warning longbow and if you don't like it hit it again so yeah there you go um, and the other one I want hang on a second here Gotta grab something off another file. I really need to get to remember to bookmark this site. Uh, where's my role playing folder? Uh, G Dungeons and Dragons, Fifth Edition, Duchy. Homecoming Queen and the basement. All right, got it. Now we're back. This thing is fantastic. It's uh, dhmstark.co.uk slash rpgs dash encounter calculator. Um, it's really nice. So we're going to have four players. They're going to be first level. Um, I'll probably make them second level. Just uh, second level. And we're going to say calculate. And so there we go. There's my XP, right? Um, so if I say one monster with a CR of one, uh, calculate, it's an easy encounter. If I say nine monsters with CR one, it's a deadly encounter, and it tells me exactly, it lays everything out for me. It also allows me to balance different encounters by saying uh, three monsters at CR one, but one monster at CR two. Oops. And there we go. That still winds up, that CR two becomes a real problem, right? So you can sort of play around and get a feel for exactly what you want to do. If my players are third, four at three, I recalculate, that's a hard encounter, right? So yeah, um, what it allows you to do really nicely, I find, is, so I like to do groups of encounter, uh, groups of monsters. So CR5, one at CR1. What's that going to give me? That's a medium encounter. That's a good place to start. Um, in a, in a five-room dungeon, you're going to get a couple of fights. Um, you want the group to you know, fight a few things, but win. And you want the real tough one at the end. So that gives me my uh, that gives me my, my setup. So we're going to go back to our map here. Okay, save. And then I need, okay, so we've got area one with one A. We've got two, three, four, and five. There you go. So one is going to be, um, so old fort. Main hall. And this is going to be Collapsed Tower. All right. Um, two. All right, let's go take a look and see. Now, this place, I don't, um, the group has is, is been told they're going to be exploring ruins. So what I think I want to do is have the group fight some undead down here. And they're, undead are great because I don't need an ecology. Don't need to have any way for air to get in. I don't need any way for food to get in. They just are. 
So we're going to go to D&D uh, Beyond, which is one of my favorite sites for this kind of thing. We're going to say official monsters. I'm going to say a CR of 1 8th to a CR of 1. And I'm okay with undead. Um, and constructs. So I've got undead and constructs construct shown. And then I can sort by CR. And advanced fil filters, uh, monster source, um, core D&D. Don't show me anything that's not outside. So what I'm doing here, real quick, is I'm just restricting it to content I've got books for, right? Curse of Strad's cool, but I don't own it, so it doesn't matter what the stats on the creature are. All right. So, and then I can sort again based on CR. So that gives me some options. Flying sword, skeletons, zombies, shadows. Shadows can be delightfully funny. It can be delightfully scary. So I think what I'm going to do, we're going to start out so our boss is going to be a specter, I think. Um, and I think the first fight is going to be some animated armor and a flying uh, with a flying sword. That sounds good. So, we're going to rearrange this so I don't have to jump around so much. So, flying sword is, is one quarter, 0.25. And then the animated armor is one. Okay, we're going to calculate. That's easy. So, if I go two and two, that's deadly. Okay. That's a medium. Okay. So the CR, the, the lower CRs are pretty cheap. If I go two and two, that becomes deadly, though. Do I want to do that to set the tone of the adventure? A, this is big and scary. I don't think so. I think I'm going to stick with this. And what I'm going to do is there are four players, so there's going to be four flying swords plus the, the animated armor. That's going to be what's in the first in the first zone. Okay. So, flying sword, we're going to... So, what I'm going to do here... We're going to view open new page. And I think I'm just going to send it off to the printer. Uh, so what I'm going to do here real quick, I'm going to grab a few things and print some stuff off. Because as I say, this is for my game. So monsters here are going to be a flying sword, which is this and CR 0.25 and I said there's going to be four of them yeah I'm just going to send this off to the printer 
print page number one. All right. Um, and then I need my animated armor. I always list stuff in inverse order, by the way, of CR, so you can immediately see what the big problem in the room is. And there we go. And we're going to send that off to the printer as well. The great thing about this is I literally can then just trim this out, pass it to the players. Hey, this is what you're fighting. For what you have just fought, congratulations, you've learned something. And the players basically build up their own copy, of the, their own monster manual. So as they go through the, all the various adventures at the table, you pass them the cards, basically these print sheets. And the players then, this is what the players, the characters, this is their storage of knowledge. Hey, we fought these before, aren't they... Uh, well, hang on, these ones are different. And so they immediately start to learn how the world morphs and changes around them. Okay. So what do we know about... So, um, and I need just need a, a blurb. So, of course, um, there is C, area, uh, roof has collapsed. Debris everywhere. Old skeletons. Hey, thanks very much for the follow. Much appreciate that. That's great. Oh, wait a second. That's not a follow. That's somebody hosting me, Octavia. Sorry, Octavia. Um, my monitor screen is really bloody tiny for some reason right now, and I'm having trouble reading the screen. But yeah, Octavia Memories is hosted with one viewer. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Error printing. Oh, of okay. course. Yeah, hang on a second. The printer's out of paper. <laughs> I'll just, uh, I can, I'll just ignore those messages. I'll pick them up off the printer later. Um, yeah, that's cool. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Um, it's got me in the edit. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Uh, hang on a second here. I think it's got me in uh, in edit mode as opposed to broadcast mode. Yeah, all right. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So yeah, welcome. All right, so old suits of broken armor lay about. Okay, smell. What do the characters smell? Uh, dust. Uh, yesterday's rain. Um, that's a good place to start. Um, and the collapsed tower, we're just going to make a note. Um, C, probably, was 15 meters tall, now a rubble pile. All right. Um... And they can find, and if they search, I'm going to say that they can find a little bit of treasure, just to wet the whistle. So we're going to say an individual. There we go. Empty bag. That's not fun at all. Come on now. Oh, fine. I'll do a hoard then, and I'll just pick something out of it. Um, yeah, there we go. That's a nice one. 
If they do a search, they're going to find a small, small, a small onyx bracelet worth 25 gold. So right away, there's a little incentivize the players. So, okay, worth 25 GP. Secret door. Secret trap. Oh, I forgot. Uh, this search is, we're going to say, DC 12. They're going to find that. And this is DC 15. Secret trap door in floor. There you go. So that covers our little area down here in the map. All right. So again, the idea, hey, it's going pretty good, Octavia. So uh, what I'm doing is I've got a, um, I've got a D and D game. I'm going to be uh, hosting on Christmas Eve here at the house, and uh, so I'm doing a. It's just a kick in the door game for the for the housemates. One of the players hasn't played in probably 15 years. One of the players hasn't played in about 10 years. Neither of them are familiar with 5e, uh, and the other two players basically play two games a week. So I got quite an imbalance. Yeah, in-person D&D, you bet it. So I'm doing up a little kick-in-the-door game. Um, the idea is I'm going to print the whole map out, do it uh, on some foam board, and just piece it together as the, the players explore. So the I got a couple things here um, on a GM-only layer. So if I tap that, you'll see parts of the map disappear. So the idea is I'll print this out, put it on the... Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, I adore 5e. It's very new player friendly. Basically, 5e lets you ramp the complexity layer up, um, you know, as the players learn, and it's great that way. So, yeah, so the idea is I've got a couple, so I'm going to be able to print this chunk out, glue it to some foam board, pass them this, say, hey, this is what you find initially, and then, you know, when they, they find uh, that, that secret then there's they then I can put you know put these things out show them this and they can start exploring so I, I'm doing a typical five room dungeon to get them going I'm uh, sticking to a, a color scheme uh, save now and yeah do that so I'm sticking to a color scheme inspired by a, a top level map that I've I'm just goofing around I just love doing maps uh, my current my current 5e campaign that I'm running using Roll20, uh, not a lot of map generation requirements. The group moves pretty slowly. There's a lot of top, big world stuff going on. Um, so I'm just deciding I'm going to do a, a bunch of stuff and throw it out on the uh, on my on my website for folks who are interested to be able to grab. So um, the starting area is over here in this little area, Hartwick, and I've got this little dungeon over here that I'm playing with. And there we are. Yeah, no, I agree with you completely, Octavia. Um, the thing is, is people love to tell stories. Humans are stories by nature. Uh, Storytellers and story consumers by nature. And it's hard to follow a story if the character keeps dying. Um, though, we, you know, if you do that in a movie, uh, very famously Full Metal Jacket, every time you get to learn, every time they shift to the main character, to a new main character, you get learn just enough about them to feel grief when they get killed. And then the character fall, and then the camera moves to the next person who is doomed by the fact the character camera is following them, and that's hard. The old D and D, of course. I started out playing D and D too. Oh yes, absolutely. I agree with you, Octavia. Um, when I started playing D and D, D and D two, you sort of kept it. You, you had the character you were playing, and you had a character, a spare character, rolled up so they could be found chained to the wall in the next room when your character died, and they, could, you know, the new character could be freed, and you join the group, and you keep adventuring. Um, it just wasn't a good game if you know you, someone didn't die in every in every outing kind of thing, um, and that's just uh, bad taste. Creative writing, yeah, I'm a writer as well. Uh, I've got a couple of books published on Amazon, so yeah. Um, for me, um, D and D is a storytelling tool. It's a visual storytelling tool. So I, my creative writing is my maps. My creative writing is my plot lines. But I, like I say, I've done a couple of novels as well. Um, all right. 
So I need to decorate my ruins here a little bit more. I need a door, amongst other things. We're going to do that. Um, a strong door. Door double. double. There we go. And we're going to set normal. And we'll put it there. I'm going to put maybe a couple of windows. Uh, metal bars. Yeah, that'll be kind of cute. Oops. Hey, why are you here? Oh, because I'm on the wrong one. Oh, <laughs> move. Okay, here. Um, so first off is I'm on the wrong one. So I'm going to go walls. Okay. And then I'm going to go standard here. And okay. And then I'm going to... And there, <laughs> don't need the door to glow. Nothing wrong with that, Octavia. Thanks for hanging out, regardless. All right, and what I'm going to do here is set normal. Yeah, do you? Problem is, oops, uh, shift key. There we go. So there's going to be a, an initial square when they come in where they're going to be able to see that, you know, there was sort of a, an enclosure, and that's all going to be broken. So I'm going to make a note of that. Um, main double doors and a up from floor. There we go. Hang on a second. Someone just buzzed me. Rainfall warning. Oh, good grief. Um, <laughs> See, that makes perfect sense to me, Octavia. Sometimes you know. It, sometimes somebody else's inspiration is a good source of inspiration for 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 uh, for me too. So I get it. Totally get that. So we're gonna put a window in. And yeah. So we're gonna set normal. We're gonna say more. And we're gonna put one there. And we're gonna put one here. And we're gonna drag down. And we'll put a window here. And a window here. We're going to talk about those windows now. Um, windows are smashed out and open. Okay, and we're going to set up our encounter. There we go. And that's plenty of information. There's going to be a little bit of theater of the mind here. The players are going to have to sort of think for themselves about what they're seeing. Um, and that gets us to here. Cool. All right, let's talk about an area two.
No, I totally agree with you, Octavia. Totally agree with you there. All right. Um, okay. So now we're going to get into our cave complex. Um... So uh, we've got our puzzle, we've got our entrance area, we've got our puzzle, we've got a setback. Okay, what are we going to do for our setback? Um, I think probably what we'll do is maybe a... Um, hmm. I'll have to think about that. So we're going to have... We've said we're going to have a, um, a specter down here. We're going to have just something interesting to explore and look at, which is going to be our cave here, and I'm going to put some, a couple of large rocks in here, with some mushrooms growing around, and we're going to put a rock pile there. The entire idea here is that the players are going to see stuff scattered around, big boulders and things, uh, and they're going to get paranoid and wonder if there's anything hiding behind it, but there isn't. It's just a room with a pond. Um, All right, I want to do something a little different here. So I'm going to grab purple. And I'm going to say OK. I'm going to draw a poly here. Oops. <laughs> uh, you line width is zero. OK. Then I'm going to create a smudge layer, uh, a smudge sheet. And the only thing that smudge does is it has a blur on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the smudge sheet. There we go. So now I have purple glowing mushrooms. Yay for me. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. And there we are. Something for the players to go, huh? What the? Um, and then we're going to grab some more mushrooms and we'll put a little thicket of them over here. And we'll add another puddle on the smudge layer. There we go. Nice. Okay. Add some color to the map. Oh, um, so real, re real thing, um, there are over 100 locations in the world right now where an underground coal seam has caught fire. And so the surface location has basically smoke vents pouring smoke out. Every once in a while you see these gouts of fire as underground gas escapes. The terrain is pretty baked and black, but the actual fire is underground. The ground feels hot to the the ground feels hot to the, to your feet. Um, the air smells of burnt sulfur and and coal product, and 
Yeah, um, there's one in Pennsylvania. Um, they think it started from a lightning strike and an old with uh, associated with an old coal mine. But there are several other locations where yeah, underground coal seam catches fire. Uh, they you can't put them out. Um, they've tried everything, that, but the problem is there's anywhere that air gets in just keeps the fire burning in that direction. So yeah, um, and it's a uh, it produces quite a hellscape. Um, if you, I think if you do a Google search underground coal fire. Um, yeah, there you are. But it produces the an absolutely phenomenal circumstance where there's no obvious fire. Okay, yeah. So yeah, it uh, that that's a look. You know, if you're looking for something involving fire that doesn't involve you know having just having the ground you know the, uh, a forest fire raging through an area or something, that's one way to do it. Um, alternately, you can always do you can always pull um, uh, essentially where the the you know the the elemental plane of fire you know with little burning elemental creatures has you know extruded part of itself into the, into your world. So in that space, fire is normal. Uh, it can't expand outwards because it's a magical intrusion. It's being contained by whatever magic allowed the intrusion. But yeah, it's a night. It's one way to do it. Okay, so we've got our glowing purple mushrooms now. Let me get back to our floors. And back to our black. Now, what's interesting about the smudge layer is I can use it for other things if I want. Fair enough. Like, I'm not sure what your setting is, so. All right. So, over here. Uh, my apologies, by the way, about Nightbot, Nightbot babbling on. He hasn't had anyone to talk to today, so he's got he's to get it all off his chest now. Um, all right. So I want their first introduction with the undead to be up here. This is a fairly large room. Um, oops. Uh, 22 meters, that's 66 feet. Fair enough. Okay, gotcha. So 66 feet, that's fairly substantial. Uh, let's go take a look at what skeletons are. Skeletons are our CR one quarter. Okay. So if I remove a row, calculate, that's trivial. If I say, wow, how many of these do I need to... Really? Okay, that's obviously broken. Yeah, okay, that should not be true. Okay, so it breaks with a CR of 200. Uh, that's a problem. Uh, they're 50 XP each. That's better. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, another medium encounter. That's good. So we're going to put five skeletons down here. So again, I'm going to open this in a new tab. Send this page off to the printer. Yeah, okay. Hang on a sec. I'll be right back. I got to uh, go I got to go throw some paper in my printer here. It's going to just going to keep whining at me. It's 1 minute.
Alrighty, I'm back. That should stop whining now. Um... Except nothing came out of the printer. Alright, I'll just print them again. I'm not going to do that now. Oh, um. Sorry. <laughs> While I was working, I felt I wanted to listen to a bit of uh, Miracle Sound. So, turn that down a bit so it's not quite so obnoxious. Yeah, so uh, what it is, there's a, an artist I listen to, um, to call, who calls himself Miracle of Sound. Um, he's a YouTuber, Patreon, uh, gamer, um, loves, you know, movie, it, it, comic, it, comics, movies, games, blah, and I absolutely adore his music. He's just released a new album, Level 9, um, so just putting it on to listen to. He's actually quite pretty good about it. He doesn't mind folks using, having his music play on streams or whatever. He just says, hey, l let people know what they're listening to. So, there you go. If it bothers you, let me know. All right, so we're going to have some skeletons up here. Um, I think I'll probably put a couple of rocks in here, too. Just so the place looks a little bit more broken up. Um, so that's that. Room number two is going to be... Room number two, um, cave. cave in the hill. So, what are they going to see? Musty, stale, musty smell, stale. Torches don't burn. Um, torches uh, don't burn well. And then we're going to say there's an encounter. There's no search. go. And what are we going to do for these guys for a little bit of loot? Uh, we'll just pop it and pick something interesting here.
I'm looking for him. Okay. And that's interesting. Ten pounds of copper trading cards worth five gold. It's going to be a DC5. In other words, they're most likely going to find it. Most people's passive perception will just turn that up. All right. So that covers our area two. Um, I'll scatter a couple of piles of bones around the room as well. a hint. Area three, of course, is our pond cave. So we're going to say that they can... So first off is it's smaller than the area they just came from, area two. Um, the darkness is broken up by a soft purple glow from the, from the mushrooms. That's going to be obvious. Um, large pond. Bubbles. That's good. Area four. What are we going to put in area four? Let's go take a look at my monster selection here. Taking a look for some ideas here. Now, what is that? Okay, a 
That's urban. Urban. Underwater. Desert. Now these are 100 XP each. How does that balance? That's trivial. Two of them, easy. Three of them is going to be hard. Okay. So we'll put three of these in here. That'll be something completely different. Um, so we need to explain that. I could do that, right? I could put maybe a magic symbol in here and the, you know, this sort of lava pool with the, okay, yeah, to get some, so, you know, something strange and, and hokey happened down, was happening down here. Don't need to explain it yet. Players can ask questions and do some research later. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to put a... here. What I'm going to do is then I'm going to grab some red and I'm going to put uh, there we go and I'm going to move that to my smudge layer and my smudge sheet my apologies. So there we go. So that's pretty obviously not right. Um, it's a bit too bright though. I'm gonna dial that back. Uh, and I'm gonna say prior into, oops. And so I'm gonna change my color to something a bit softer. There we go. That's a little bit less obnoxious. And move my smudge layer. So it's just going to have to do that. That's, oh well, that's too bad. Okay, so there we go. Um, then what I'm going to do is come up here and maybe we'll put, you know, an evil doom circle over in this corner. And we're going to scale this. So it's kind of big. There we are. And then I'm going to put we'll go with this. And we're going to put this on the smudge layer as well.
center and point. There we go. And then I'm going to grab this, throw it on my smudge sheet. So now we've got a sort of an evil green glow. Ooh, right. And I think those are both a little overdone. So I'm going to scale them. Do it. I'm just going to say 0.8. Oops. Gav, you're a little loud, man. Turn that down. There we go. That's a bit better. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Again, there, that's a little less obnoxious. So now we've got our um, and then maybe we'll throw what, an altar in here. at normal. And then we're going to turn this here. And then we're going to grab a statue and put it here as well. And maybe we're going to have the statue glow as well. So then we're going to item, and we'll throw it on our smudge, our smudge sheet. And there we go. So we got a evil statue, we got a summoning circle, and then we've got, of course, got our evil little, our, our evil little fire creatures. That'll keep everyone occupied for a little bit. There'll be all kinds of conversation and talking about that. Okay. Um, and so we're going to start out with what do they see? Um, east corner, east branch. And then um, north center area is glowing statue of a cross between a fire creature and an elf. Explain that later. I don't need to know what it means now.
glowing magic circle in the northwest corner of room of chamber. And then um, old untended and damaged altar in center of room. Cool. Okay, and then smell, of course. Um, sulfur. Smoke. Grit. And heat. All right. That's pretty good. And this is going in the area four and area five, of course. So So area five is treasure the lost treasure cave um, and so one of the things of course is that they're going to see um, sharp slope leading down to the cave And then um, musty stale. No, oh, that's it. Um, smell and this is going to be a, basically the same description as the Okay, uh, so we're going to do a double encounter just to make things hard. Um, so this is where the group is going to encounter the specter. the XP on this guy? 200. That's going to be easy. Two is going to be hard. Okay, so. Three would be deadly. Mm. I think for now, I'm just going to go easy on my players. Uh, no, they can do a deal with the deadly.
with that. So, I think automatically we need to know what the sword is. So, I'm gonna say... Let's talk about that sword, because I think the right answer is... Because these guys only take half damage from non-magical attacks, right? So, there's, there's a spellcaster, they'll be okay. But the fighter is going to be kind of hard. It's going to be a bit of a hard luck case. Oops. So I think I'm going to do two things. I'm going to put... A... Oops. And this is going to be DC 17. I'm going to put a small... A longsword. Plus one up here. So they're gonna they're gonna have the option to pick up a um, uh, actually a dagger, uh, short sword, plus one short sword. Okay, what are you whining about now? Oh, out of paper again. Never mind. I'll print that off in a minute. Um, so that way they'll for sure have a magic weapon. But if uh, if they take the time to look around. And they roll good, and they roll well. They'll pick up a magic sword, sword up here, and then there's going to be the obvious magic sword down here. And let's go see here. So we're going to go back. Do I have a good little magic weapon? Uh, DM craft. No, I want to go back to there. Magic items. So I've got an interesting idea. Oh, there we are. That's a nice one for this. Right? Stand against the darkness. If attuned, using a bonus action to strike the blade causes it to emit a bright light. And it does an additional d6. But, it's a magic weapon. So that's going to be the, the sword. So the obvious answer is go grab the sword. So if they're that smart, they'll be a uh, leg up. They won't be able to attune to it right away, but that's okay. And then what we're going to say, so... Um, and I'm going to say... Um, notes. The pedestal has protection evil. So, that'll change the game a little bit. If the players rush over here, now what's a three meter uh, uh, radius in center? So the radius is going to be three meters. Yeah, okay. So you can see... So there'll be a little area that if they rush into it and immediately try and grab that sword, that the specters won't be able to follow. I kind of like that idea. Um, Alright. So what I'm actually going to do, save now, I'm going to change my color to a magic blue. And then my line width is going to be 0 0.125. And then I'm going to do... Oops. 
center, uh, radius and center is going to be three meters centered there. And then I'm going to copy, um, I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to play sort of the cards above the table. I want the players to have the chance to solve the puzzle. To realize that they're safe from these hard to hit creatures if they run into that area. So there's a soft glowing ring that they're going to be able to see. And we're going to set normal. And we'll put a coffin over in this corner. Just for suitable creepability. And a coffin over here. And maybe one over here. And that will be where, I say, three specters. Yeah, three specters. CR1 times 3. All right. Area. Okay. All right. Um, so if they can take, if they can figure out what to do with those specters, basically the trick is run into the protection area and fight them from there. Um, then they'll be okay. Um, and then we're just going to roll a treasure hoard. And I'm just going to grab this treasure hoard. Um, and uh, other treasure. There's treasure hoard. So this is a bunch of stuff that they're going to wind up getting picked up, that they're going to... And this will make them feel like they've got a, a big haul. And if they like the evening, then maybe we'll play some more. I'm going to take the instrument... And then there's a sentinel shield. And then uh, lore. Lore DC uh, 13. Uh, I think lore's a skill. Yeah, it's either lore or arcana. And so this is important. The players may notice shield plus one. There we go. And that's the adventure done. So. Let's take a look at our map again here. So they're going to... That gives us a pretty good little dungeon. Um, yeah, two hours on the stream. Okay. So two hours to do the map and then figure out what goes into it not bad. Um, I'll be able to print this off in color. Um, I'll have to do two passes of the map, but that's okay. Um, so I can turn the music down here. 
yeah, so there we go. That gives us a, a, a good map. So I'm going to do two, ver two versions printed out. Um, one version for me that's going to show everything. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, actually, I'll wait because I may have to f fight with the printer. But I will, however, um, export this. So we're going to say save. And then I'm going to export. And I'm going to save that as a JPEG. And yeah, that's fine. And OK. And yeah, I'll pop that up on my web on my uh, website. And there we go. So and I'll post all the information for the encounters and stuff on the website as well. Sweet. I like that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's it for me for right now. Uh, thanks very much for hanging out with me. I'm going to be uh, doing more of this. Um, I'm hoping to do one or two streams a week. Um, essentially, I've got this whole big map, and everywhere you see these three little dots is a dungeon. Um, and, you know, that's, and then there are towns to do maps for, and my idea is, is, you know, once, twice a week, I want to do a live stream where what I'm doing is putting together maps for this bigger map, and then hooking them all together as a linked set, um, so that, you know, if folks want to follow along and run adventures, they can. That's what I'm, that's what I'm aiming for. So thanks very much for hanging out with me this morning. I'm gonna go get some uh, some food, relax a little bit. Uh, I gotta get this printed out. And like I said, I got some, what I want to do is glue it all to cork, but to uh, some foam board and get that cut out. So um, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be working on. I'll uh, probably if you if you uh, hit my website, uh, I'll probably post um, a picture of what the whole map looks together at uh, set up as in at miniature scale, and uh, um, just as a for for goofy. And yeah, so take care of yourselves. Uh, enjoy the best of the holidays. I don't know if I'll be stream. I should be streaming again tomorrow morning, but eh, that doesn't always work there well. Uh, we'll see. But um, if I'm streaming tomorrow, probably we'll be playing. Uh, probably be playing uh, either playing a game. Likely going to be um, a transport fever because they've just released their thank you farewell patch. So I want to see what they've done with that. Looks like it's going to be good. Um, and, uh, or if I'm feeling inspired, I'll be working on the next map for this place. Um, possibly the travel map, uh, in detail between Hartwick and the, uh, and the dungeon. That might be fun to do. Give me a second. So yeah, the, the travel map between Hartwick and the dungeon we just did, right? Because that's a lake, there's some hills here. It might be fun to do, um, uh, what is that distance? So it's 45 kilometers, that's two days. That's two days travel, essentially, comfortable. Uh, it might be fun to do an overland travel map um, with some encounter areas and some some specials and things like that for the players as they're tromp tromping back from the dungeon with their with their their new swords and and all the treasure they found, having you know something show up and try and take it from them. Yeah, that might be fun to do. Maybe we'll do that. So yeah, thanks very much, folks. Uh, appreciate you hanging out. Like I say, uh, as I usually close off my uh, my streams, don't forget you are the most important people. Um, if you're going through tough times, there's no, particularly this time of year, it's easy to feel left out, easy to feel alone. Call a friend. They want to hear from you. Um, you're not going to be a hassle. You're not going to be a problem. We love, everybody loves hearing from a long lost friend, even if they're specific, even if they're going through hard times, in some cases, specifically if they're going through hard times, we'd rather, we'd, your friends would rather be there to help. Take care of yourselves. Have fun. We'll catch you around. Hope you enjoy, hope you're enjoying the weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you.